So the NBA trade deadline is about two weeks away. We're starting to see some names coming up. And I figure we might as well just talk about it. And we'll start with the Atlanta Hawks because they've made it pretty known that they're willing to listen to offers for Jeff Teague as well as Al Horford. And the Hawks, they're kind of stuck in the middle right now when they have a young point guard in Dennis Schroeder who seems like he can be something. So I can see the rationale here. You trade away Jeff Teague and you you still have Schroeder. You improve somewhere else. I kind of like the idea of that. As for teams that could actually acquire Jeff Teague, I feel like it's... The only teams that really need a point guard that I can think of are the Knicks as well as the Utah Jazz, because everybody has a good point guard nowadays. The Knicks are not in a beautiful position to acquire Teague, in my opinion, because as far as the resources on the roster, I don't think there's anybody there who really moves the needle. I mean, Lance Thomas is cool, but I mean, come on. And as far as the Knicks draft pick situation, they don't have their pick this year, and they do have their 2017 selection, but it's like... You really want to go two straight seasons without a pick when you're on the playoff bubble like the Knicks are? Not to mention if you're the Hawks, you probably say, I kind of want something more immediate for Jeff Teague. I don't want a pick in 2017. We look at the Utah Jazz, however. The Jazz can give the Hawks Alec Burks as well as the OKC pick, which I believe is next season, or they could do Alec Burks as well as Trey Burke for Jeff Teague. Some young players, a scorer on the wing, and Alec Burks. I feel like if Atlanta's going to trade Jeff Teague, they probably go that route. So, look for Utah to acquire Jeff Teague if that happens. As far as Al Horford is concerned, only reason he's getting moved is if the Hawks have a decent idea that he's not going to return in free agency. And at the same time, teams are not going to give up too much for a guy that has a decent chance of just leaving in the offseason anyway. So... I feel like the only team that I can really think of that could have a chance at Al Horford in terms of a trade, it might be my Boston Celtics, and it's just because the Celtics have the Brooklyn picks, and the Brooklyn picks give them the power to give you the Dallas pick, the T-Wolves pick, the Grizzlies pick, their own pick. They can just give you a multitude of selections that are probably going to be somewhere between, I don't know, 12 and 20, I guess, I don't know. Do I take that if I'm the Hawks? Unless I have a really, really good idea that Al Horford is not coming back, then no, I don't take that if I'm Atlanta. Now, I do think there's a lot of teams that could use Al Horford, but in terms of trading for the guy right now, I don't know. I mean, Indiana's not giving up Miles Turner, as they shouldn't. Chicago's, there's no young player the Hawks would want on the Bulls for Al Horford, I don't think. I don't know if Al Horford gets moved, to be honest. Jeff Teague, I think that's a decent chance. Another name I've seen pop up is Rudy Gay, which I don't think Sacramento should move him. The guy's been really good this season. He's averaging like 18 points. He's been efficient, 48% from the field, and his three-point shot has come alive in the month of January. I've seen the Chicago Bulls with some talks with Rudy Gay. I don't think Rudy Gay is the right guy for the Bulls. They need a guy who can be a shooter at that small forward position and while Rudy has been shooting okay lately he's still only 34% from three not to mention again why the hell would the Kings trade Rudy Gay I know Caspi's been good off the bench but now let's talk about Markeith Morris who has basically checked out on the Phoenix Suns because they traded away his brother Markeith Morris has a lot of talent he can hit the outside shot he can hit mid-range he um pretty nimble power forward the question is if he's actually going to have his head on straight because if he does he's a really solid player I would actually like to see the Washington Wizards get in on this because the Wizards are struggling they are I believe not in the playoffs at the moment in the Eastern Conference and um, their forward positions are kind of kind of lacking I mean Otto Porter he's having an okay season I would still like to see his shooting be better but I think Markeith Morris at the power forward spot for the Wizards could be really good because you still have that John Wall, Marcin Gortat pick and roll, but Morris is a guy who can kind of float around and be a spot up player, but also an effective pick and roll player with John Wall. I like the idea of Morris in Washington, and I think the Wizards could make it happen because they have all their picks. And you have to imagine with how Morris has been I would think it wouldn't take too much to acquire him from the Suns. I mean, you might have to throw in something in there just to make the salaries work, but... 
I have to imagine Phoenix is not holding out on moving Morris. Like, I think you can get him if you're the Wizards. I would like to see him there. Now, another team we could talk about is the New Orleans Pelicans because they've had a disappointing season so far. Granted, they are 7-3 and three in their last 10, so maybe they're beginning to turn it around, but it hasn't been a good season overall. There's been talks of Ryan Anderson being moved. Personally, I would not do that. I think he's had a very good offensive season for them. And... I know he's not the best defender in the world, but he is coming off the bench, which makes it a little, more, a little bit more manageable. Not only that, but you could play him with Anthony Davis, and I mean, Davis is of course a fantastic defensive player, so I think Ryan Anderson's defense is manageable. The question is, I think, is Tyreek Evans available for a trade? Well, Tyreek is an interesting player because he is a ball-dominant guard, forward, whatever who is not super effective when he doesn't have the ball in his hand, even though he's weirdly enough shooting 39% from three this season, which I had to do a double take on. Is there anybody in the league who's willing to give the Pelicans either a decent center or a 3 and D small forward and also need someone who can be a ball dominant scorer for them in Tyreek Evans? That's kind of like a very specific trade and... That's just kind of tough to find. I don't know if there's a team who can really provide that for the Pelicans. Because I think the problem with the Pels is their center and their small forward positions are just really tough. Not too good in those spots. I don't know if there's a move for Tyreek Evans. Unless somebody's willing to do Tyreek Evans for Trevor Ariza, which I'm not doing. Speaking of Trevor Ariza and speaking of the Houston Rockets, they're another disappointing team this year. And it's kind of weird because usually you can point towards X's and O's for a team struggling. The Rockets just have a really bad culture. I mean, they get down five points and they go, up. Oh, well, here we go again, we're going to lose. Now you could say they're a horrible defensive team. And if you want to go that route, I mean, Taj Gibson is apparently available. He's a good defender. He can hit the mid-range. That's That could maybe be a player that fits in their system. And it would give the Bulls a chance to give Bobby Portis some more minutes. But Joe Kim Noah just hurt his shoulder and he's out for the year. So that that would thin the Bulls' front court. Not to mention, based on Houston's assets, guys like Marcus Thornton or KJ McDaniels, Terrence Jones, I don't know, those aren't really guys that make me say, oh yeah, I'll give you Taj Gibson. Not to mention, Monty Eunice is coming back soon. And we got to imagine he'll be a good thing, so... Weird spot for Houston, because they're pretty much the same team that went to the conference finals, and then they just stopped caring about basketball. But I think that's going to do it. I went through a few players, went through a few teams that I feel um, could make a trade, maybe should make a trade, whatever. Good luck to your team in the trade deadline. If the Celtics really do acquire Al Horford and Kyle Korver without giving up any of the Brooklyn picks and they only trade Jared Sullinger to do it, I'm probably going to cry of happiness as we eventually lose to the Cavaliers in the conference finals. But it'll be very fun along the way.